Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. Today is Friday, October the 12th. I had to stop and think about that for a moment. Um, we have a spaghetti dinner coming up. Not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. That will benefit the Lamar Lighthouse for the rebuilding of the tabernacle. And at that time, I'm hoping to have another one of these mats for the homeless ready to present to them. Um, that is my goal. I don't know if I'll meet it or not. But generally, if I really sit down and work on these, it takes me about a week. So, um, yeah, it doesn't take long. But it's just, you got to sit down and do it, and sometimes I don't get to doing it. Today was our normal day for quilting at the fire hall, and I did not bring quilting this time. Normally I bring my, my uh, sewing machine and then items to sew. Um, when I had my back problem, I wasn't doing that. I was just taking things to crochet or knit. Um, I did take up some more of the hats. And I was wanting to get a photo of the hats that we are turning into the nursery this weekend. Because I decided we really need to sit down and document what we have given over the year. And we, we've been doing this since, I know since November of last year. I'm not sure, but I think we may have started in October. I might have to go back and look. But I haven't documented every time I take items down. And I thought it would be just interesting to see a tally. But based on the amount that we normally send up, we send 120 to 130 each month, sometimes more. Um, so I just based it on 120 for the past 11 months that we've been doing this. And the gals at the Mill Hall Senior Center have roughly sent up 1,320 hats for babies. That's not including what we do for the prayer shawl, for Geisinger, for other people. That was just for the UPMC Hospital. So I think we've been doing a pretty good job. One of the ladies she used to crochet in the past. Um, she started crocheting up again. And she is the one that made that cute little um, cabbage patch doll cap for her great grandbaby, great granddaughter. So <laughs> she came to me one day and she goes, I would like to jo join the baby brigade, beanie brigade. And I thought, what are you talking about? She goes, I would like to join that. So we decided this morning that that part of the knitting and crochet group is going to be called the Baby Beanie Brigade, as in B cubed. So we now have a new name for that group that just make the baby ads. Um, yeah, it's, it's been interesting. We have had some people that have asked for hats for different size kids while they're in there. And, you know, usually someone will make a hat for them. So quite a few hats have been made other than just baby beanies. Now, I want to talk to you about something that's serious. And I'm not going to name my friend that did this. But she had an incident. She's had two knee replacements done in the past. Um, she had an incident when she was either bringing her clothes in or I think she was taking them down off the line. She slipped and fell. She didn't hurt herself. But the problem was with her knees, she couldn't get back up. So she had some issues with getting up. She's yelling for help. Um, finally, someone did come and they helped get her up and checked her over. And 
you know, all that and everything is fine. But I have always given a lot of my folks grief because most everyone has cell phones. But while she was down there yelling and screaming for help for quite a while, um, if she had her cell phone, she could have called her husband, called someone, called her neighbor, you know, to see if they were home, see if they could come help her get up. It's not a funny situation as we get older. When we fall, and it gets harder to get up. Those of you that are young, by all means, keep getting up and down off the floor. There comes a point when you get older, for some reason you quit getting down on the floor like you used to with the kids, the grandkids, those kind of things. And then you find yourself in a mess or a little bit of a pickle when it comes time to get up. I know that I have had to get things down off the floor where I've had to get down on my hands and knees and then getting back up. Let's just say it's interesting trying to get back up. So, by all means, those of you that have cell phones, it's a good idea to make sure it's always on you if you're outside doing something just in case something happens. Um, so that's my little PSA for the day. Luckily, my friend, she was very lucky. She didn't break a hip, didn't break anything. But it could have been pretty bad, you know, if she'd been out there laying and couldn't have gotten couldn't have gotten help. So take care of yourselves, girls. Work at it. Um, <clears throat> we go to this one restaurant. Generally, after we get through their quilting, we go to different restaurants to eat and um, one of the restaurants a couple of months ago they had gone the girls had a really bad experience took forever to get waited on even after they got waited on everybody else around them that had come in after them had gotten their food we decided to give the place another try and of course it was just apparently that day was a bad day but, again, this is a rant for service people. Do your best. Take care of your customers. And if, you know, if something happens and they're kind of upset with the way things happen and about the food, because food that day, they said, was awful. It was overdone. It was overcooked. It was just a bad situation. Granted. It may not be the service person's problem. It may be an issue with the cook. You know, the cook's in the back. But if you're a service person, there's a reason that you should be smiling. Try to be pleasant. Even when everything else is going to pot around you. Because it reflects on you. Um... You know, it was clear that it was a bad day that day in the restaurant. But even the waitress was snappy and in a bad mood. So, you know, as a result, this is a restaurant we usually go to twice a month or at least once a month. We stayed away for quite a few months. And normally we have excellent service, excellent food, no issues. So, if you're in the service industry, try to remember that. Even if the cook, the issue is with the cook, don't take it out on your customers. I know customers can be nasty, but a lot of that is because they're used to a certain level of, of service from you, and they're really disappointed, or maybe they're having a bad day that day, you know. But, again, it all comes to treating each other with kindness. For some reason, we've gotten out of that habit, and don't tell me that Trump started it. He didn't. This has been going on and progressively getting worse and worse over the years. It just, it, you know, 
let's quit using someone as an excuse for our bad behavior. It just frustrates me <laughs> when people do that. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to continue to work on this for a little bit. I'm going to get it uploaded. This weekend, I do plan on working on a couple of things. I know I haven't gotten to the Create series yet. Um, basically, what I was going to do is, with that one this time, we're going to talk a little bit about shapes, such as shapes of shawls and increasing, decreasing, and the difference between internal and external um, increases and decreases. Now. November is coming up fast, and I'd planned on having that uh, rag, um, raglan sweater. So I am going to outline some of the rules for that now, because it will run from November the 1st. I can't get that bra covered up. Um, <laughs> it's going to run from November the 1st through December the 20th. And you can do knit, crochet, you can do any kind of raglan um, sweater that you want to do. It can be just a cardigan, it can be a full sweater top, um, that kind of thing. Paid, non-paid, free pattern, whatever you choose. I am not going to give you a pattern for this. So... You need to go pick the pattern you want. There are plenty of free ones online. Baby raglan sweaters will be eligible with one caveat. You'll have to make four baby raglans to equal one adult. If you make toddler to a small child, you'll have to make two raglans for <laughs> it to be entered in the cow. There will be some prizes. Um, I am working on those prizes right now. I have a couple of things ordered. Um, so those should be coming in. And, you know, the, we'll get to that in November when that shows up. I'll be showing you a little prize here and there. So uh, start looking for some raglan patterns that maybe you want to crochet or knit. No sewing, knit or crochet. Um, Tunisian crochet is fine if you want to do it that way. So, you know, start looking, start planning some uh, patterns. I'm looking at a reminisce, the reminisce sweater. I think it's a raglan. I have to go look at it again. Um, I really like that sweater pattern, so I'm looking at that. Um, if I don't do that, I may choose to use the workshop that I had worked on my knitting um, for my sweater, that uh, purple and green sweater that I did. So I may look at using that for my raglan. It was a raglan top down. Um, so yeah, that's it and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye. Remember, Choose to be kind.